All right. Shalom. Shalom. Akiyam. First and foremost, as always, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachakudash. All praises unto the Heavenly Father, whose one true name is Yahweh. Bahashim means in the name of his only begotten Son, who the world so ignorantly calls Jesus, whose one true name is Yahweh Shai, Bahashim in the name of the Rachakudash, being the Holy Spirit. All right. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone, and touches his truth and will do well. As well as peace, blessings, and many salutations unto the hopeful elect. And my fellow laborers out there pushing his word in all truth and in all sincerity, that are giving their lives as a living sacrifice unto Yahweh by Simeon outside. All right. Uh, Shalom as well to the sincere believers in general, both men, women, and children. A Yahweh by Simeon outside. By Simeon Kako, that's thumb. All right. Lord willing, this be edifying and of good service unto you and yours. All right. And, um, you know, what I want to get into is, um, you know, obviously you can see the title. All right, why can't our people get it? All right, um, why do they have a hot, hard time, you know, grasping the things that are brought out? All right, um, you know, and this is uh, inspired by Friday Night's Camp, all right? So obviously we had the brothers from Des Moines down here in, uh, in Dallas, all right? Um, and, uh, you know, the camp split up, but nevertheless, you know, from the GMS end of day seven page, all right. Uh, the camp on Friday, you know, later later on in the camp towards the end, all right. <clears throat> we had an individual, Jake, all right. Um, you know, who I don't want to assume, but it's, it's pretty clear to see, you know, if you were there, that this is a, a sodomite we're dealing with here, all right. And um, you know, he came up talking about he was pretty well, uh, you know, well versed in the scriptures, and you know. And he, you know, he, he may have been able to quote scriptures, but he didn't totally understand what what's really being said at the end of the day. OK, you know, brothers, of course, bringing out precept, precepts, Hebrews, the eighth chapter, you know, it got into free will and, you know, things of that nature. But nevertheless, it was all for, you know, nothing. All right. So at least, you know, right now, what it seems he might come back. He might. But, you know, the chances are always very slim to none when it comes to that. All right. Because we know. Like we brought out in camp um, in Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, around about the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth verse, maybe a little on down after that. You know, it talks about they to be saved are, uh, you know, uh, it's a much smaller number. You know, roughly paraphrasing to those that do not be saved. All right, such as you know, and it compares it to a wave, unto a drop. You know, and that's the that's the difference that we're dealing with here, man. All right, so for brothers that do have this truth. All right. That do have, you know, whatever your portion may be, you know, who have come into the fold in the household of faith. You know, it's a very beautiful thing we have going here through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basim Shai. So don't take it for granted. All right. Stay on your watch. You know, keep keep praying. You know, keep a hey, stay fervent at the end of the day, man, with all things. All right. Um, but but like I said, what I wanted to go into, man, is the individual and why our people just have a very hard time. Uh, grasping the scriptures, okay? And I brought it out at the camp, you know. Uh, one aspect of it is that, you know, our people don't go into uh, the Hebrew. They don't go into the Greek, all right? They don't go into the etymology of words. They think that English is just, the, you know, just everything is just equal on the playing field of it being from one language to another language, even if it's been translated and, and, and you know, scribed by so, you know, through all these different uh, accounts, you know, that that doesn't change things. So it's important knowing that the Old Testament was written in Hebrew originally, no, knowing that the New Testament was written in Greek, all right, that you go back into the original languages and maybe not have to have a full thorough understanding of all Hebrew and be fluent and all Greek and be fluent, but just to understand particular words and key things that, you know, will, will shed light on what the gospel is actually about, which when you know, when you go to Isaiah 61, all right, from verse one to about verse five or six, it tells you what the gospel is, all right, and, and that the Lord ultimately, like it speaks about all throughout the scripture, and, these, and it's not that these scriptures aren't being brought out, it's just that, you know, our people are uh, spiritually discerned, man, you know, that's the other aspect of it, you know, our people don't, um, you know, see, for, for, for most of our people, Christianity and the doctrines and dogma that comes with that has been the basis and the foundation 
of what they understand wrongly for the Bible to actually be saying and representing, you know? So there are there the pretense that I, they already come when they start reading the scriptures is that Jesus loves everybody, okay? God is love, which God is love, all right? Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is, is definitely love, but it tells you through many different uh, scriptures that he's also, uh, you know, wrath, that he's also these, these, you know, he is at the end of the day, all right? He, he is, he exists, that is his name, all right? It's an omen nomen, you know? Just as his, as his son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, is an omen nomen, meaning he delivers or saves, all right? But nevertheless, you know, you can't tell me when scriptures talk about, you know, that wrath, you know, uh, um, judgment, uh, you know, bloodshed, you know, anything that has taken place throughout this earth uh, from from you know, the smallest incident to the greatest from the smallest amount of bloodshed, you know, a simple cut to people being beheaded. All right. You know, uh, the chainsaw massacre, you know, you know, with the, you know, people being sawed in half, like anything, the Lord at the end of the day has unctioned these things, man. All right. At the end of the day, the Lord has unctioned these things. So with that being said, you can't tell me that he is only love. All right, let's get that out the way right right now. You know, you can't tell me that he is only just that love because it tells you in the scriptures who he loves, all right, who he's dealing with. You know, it tells you that the other nations are like and it's a spit, you know, that the other nation, at the end of the day, salvation pertaineth unto Israel if you can receive it. But that's the thing. All right, and our Lord even spoke about it. Okay, but we're going to go to the actual account in which it was read, all right? Which is Isaiah the sixth chapter. All right. So I can let me share my screen. All right. Isaiah the sixth chapter. Let me make it full screen. All right, there we go. Isaiah the sixth chapter, and um, we'll start at verse eight. You know, this is Isaiah's commission, all right? But it says, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for me? Then said I, here am I, send me. All right, so Isaiah is volunteering. And what does is, what is the, uh, the Lord say? He says, and he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, Meaning what? The heart being what? <clears throat> all right. That word in the Hebrew being la'ab. All right. As we can see right here. La'ab, which goes into the mind. All right. And for your mind to be made fat is to be uh, clogged, if you will. You know, because that's ultimately what, what fat is. You know, it clogs your, um, you know, your veins. All right. It clogs your arteries, you know. And you know, if I'm not mistaken, one out of three people in the U.S. will die of heart uh, disease this year, man. All right. <laughs> so, you know, this isn't actually going into the actual heart, but it's going into the the arteries of your mind, if you will. OK, you know, look at this with a spiritual eye. It says make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed and converting back to what man at the end of the day when you know understand the um you know the repetitive um the repetitive theme time and time again throughout the scriptures that israel you know was loved by the lord that israel you know had it good that israel disobeyed and that israel was punished you understand that after that, what happens? Israel was brought back. Okay, they converted back into the Lord. They they put their trust and faith and and love and all their might in, into loving Yahweh Bashim Al Shai and being instructed by His law, statutes, and commandments, being governed and ordered by His ways. Because at the end of the day, they are holy and set apart ways. All right, and it'd be for our own benefit. But converting back into those ways from what? 
from the the idols all right from from the you know false doctrines and philosophies of men particularly these other heathen nations all right and christianity and the dogma that comes with that doctrine of men is precisely that all right now like i said brothers are bringing out the precepts at camp you know brothers are you know is being made plain upon tables but even the Lord said that that's why he spoke unto them in parables, you know, because um, let's just go to it. Because that's exactly where this is uh, going to be made mention of in Matthew, the 13th chapter. And that came out at uh, camp, you know, actually before that individual showed up, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> but this is Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10. It says, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? All right, it's lucky. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. And that being a mystery within itself that people, our people don't understand. And he kept on spewing out black, Mexican, white, black, Mexican, white. Well, it's not about if you're black, Mexican, or white, you know. That's what he was. That's what he was going on rambling about. And you're right. It's not about that. It's not about that. But at the end of the day, it is about the nation. All right. There's 18 nations within the scriptures, and you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans predominantly, all right, go back unto the nation of Israel, being one of the 12, uh, the 12 sons of the uh, patriarch Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. And being the offspring of that seed of promise that was pro promised unto our forefather Abraham, okay. That at the end at the end of the day, that's who the Lord came from, came for. All right, the nation of Israel. But see, these these scriptures are embedded with deep mysteries, okay, subtle parables, so on and so forth. Actually, let me grab a precept for that, because at the end of the day, like I made mention of. All right. This individual was a sodomite. OK, he was very feminine. I'll just say that. But through the spirit, you could just tell. I believe he was a homosexual. All right. Which, hey, you know, hey, that's your thing. Whatever. You know, I mean, ob obviously we we don't we don't approve. OK, but at the end of the day, we're not in our own land. We're not sovereign. We can't make those judgments. OK, we can't go about it how we like. All right, which is according to what? The law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. But nevertheless, all right, let me share, share this. All right. It starts with that, okay? We woke up to the fact that, were, that we were Israelites, okay? And it starts with turning back and understanding that the law is not done away with, man, okay? Actually, let me grab another one. Let me hold that. I know you can probably already read it, but just hold that. <clears throat> All right. So this is the book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse one. It says, but he that giveth his mind. All right. Or the word in, in the Hebrew, you know, lab or heart, giving his mind to the law of the most high and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies, you know, prophecy being a big thing. And the brother Tazama, you know, he brought out the um, uh, Isaiah 63, you know, who is that? Who is he that cometh from Edom with dye garments from Basra? OK. And and it, it completely went over his head. Why? Because his own phone looking for his own scripture to try to debate his cause. OK, rather than you know, like it says in Ecclesiastes, the, the fifth chapter, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools when, when thou comest to the house of the Lord, man. And, and and when we're out there on the high hedges, knowledge is being poured out, man. The breakdowns are being given. But what? You know, fools despise wisdom. Fools despise knowledge. Fools, you know, love speaking of their own heart. Which he keeps, he kept speaking of that. You know, he kept saying, "Well, God looks at the inside. God is looking more at your heart." But it also says in the same token, Jeremiah seventeen and um, uh, verse, I think eleven, if I'm not mistaken, 
Nevertheless, in the book of Jeremiah, that the heart is deceitful above all things. All right. So that right there is just a, a cold cut, man. You know, he just doesn't understand. Again, a big problem with why our people can't get it. All right. Is because first and foremost, the Lord has spiritually blinded them. All right. Isaiah 6 and 9. Okay. And because also they don't study as they should. Okay. And they refuse to hearken unto us mere <laughs> lowly men. Okay. Who on the appearance, you know, on the outside, we look, you know, just like regular men. You know, they probably scoff and think it would look funny. You know, like the scripture says, we're made a, a spectacle unto men and unto uh, the angels and, you know, so on and so forth unto the world. All right. But nevertheless, the, the it's, it's what comes out of our mouths. All right. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Simeon Shai, that is of importance. All right. But reading on verse two, Ecclesiastes or Ecclesiasticus also known as Sirach 39 and 2, it says, he will keep the sayings of the renowned men. And where subtle parables are, he will be there also. You think that individual could understand uh, a particular, you know, parables, okay? Or understand, you know, the difference between the beast, the image, and the mark? You know, you think certain individuals like that can get that? No. Why? What does it start with? Giving your mind to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Turning back to his instruction, man. Okay? Too many of our people are caught up on that Jesus juice, man. To where it's just, they're just totally, they just don't, un, they don't know. All right? And, and the apostles always like to say, you got to know the history to get the mystery. Like what we read in, um, uh, what did we open up with? Right. Or we or we went to Matthew, the 13th chapter, you know, but it is given unto you. All right. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Right. And these these breakdowns. All right. The understanding that the Gentiles are just scattered Israelites, as, as it states in James, the first chapter, the first verse. All right. First Peter one and one, you know, the scattered amongst these different nations. All right. Tobit 13 and three tells you that hey it says confess him amongst the gentiles you children of israel comma because we have been scattered among them all right so no it's not about skin color it's not about pigmentation it's not about looks anymore no now when we were when back in the ancient days we were all yeah we were all uh you know had the look of a so-called negro okay we look like those tribes, okay? Dark skin, all right? As all people were melanated uh, to begin with, obviously. But through the dispensation of time, the dispensation of, uh, you know, us being scattered amongst these different nations, all right? Going to veering off to colder climates and, and losing pigmentation after generation and generation and generation and generation, all right? It's evident that our people... Though, you know, being Israelites, being seeds of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob may not all come looking a specific way, man, all right? And that's why it says in Romans, the 8th chapter and the 16th verse, that the spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yasharala, man, that we are uh, uh, sons and daughters of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, man, okay? Those, that offspring, again, of whom the promise was gave unto all right, and Romans 9 came out, all these scriptures came out, Acts 5 and 30, you know, <laughs> all these scriptures came out, man. But nevertheless, they can't get over that, that Galatians 3 and 28. They can't get over John 3, 16. They cannot get over these particular scriptures. Why? Because their understanding is just very uh, narrow, okay? There are, a lot of our people are very nearsighted, man, Okay. Very, very narrow visioned, all right? They don't see the full picture. They don't understand that there's more to it, all right? But it says, Ecclesi or Sirach 39 and 3, it says, He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. Now, let me see, because um, it was something that I wanted to get. Uh, slip my mind. Uh, bear with me.
Okay, yeah, let's do this. All right. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to receive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Right? It says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Okay, and this is what's this is the key point. This is what's missing from a lot of our people. You know, it says the fear of Yahweh. Now, if the most high is just love, what is the need to fear him? Now, going into that word fear, because we, you know, we go into the words, that's that's our thing, man. All right. It's important to know the different variations and meanings of words when you're dealing with this messed up language called English. OK. Broken English at that slang of, uh, of, a, of a bastard language, man. All right. So fear also goes into reverence and respect. OK. When you when you because we call him the Heavenly Father and brothers often use this example, when you respect your father. OK, when you give reverence and respect unto your father, but as well as that fear, knowing that you'll get your ass whooped if you mess up. All right. You come a certain way, man. You look up to your father. You come a certain way. You you respect and give reverence unto him. Same thing with the heavenly father. OK. And the words that he commanded unto us being those children of Israel. All right. We got to be on, on, on one accord with that, man. You know. It says, <laughs> the fear of Yahweh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. All right. So that's the, that's the first step, man. It says you to fear of the Lord in, in the book of Sirach, the first chapter, the fear of the Lord is the first step to being accepted of him, man. He has to accept you, man. You have to come a specific way. You have to be in order, bro. But it says, but fools despise wisdom. And, okay. And that's the, that's, that's a. Uh, the first biggest thing our people could do. Put the pork down, man. Put the, put the, you know, this the particular behavior away, man. Okay. You have to be conformed unto the word and 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 you know to, to step into this role. All right. You know, to step into this role, it, it starts with those simple steps, man. All right. And then the Heavenly Father will, will give unto you, man. Okay, where's that scripture? Uh, yeah, let's scroll down a little bit. Proverbs 1 and um, verse 22, it says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Yeah, how, how long? Okay. How long is a, is a question that's being posed. Now, the answer to, to get out of that, it says what? Turn you out of my... or so like you turn you at my reproof behold i will pour out my spirit unto you i will make known my words unto you so if you haven't turned you know by by default if you haven't turned back into the lord's instruction his righteousness his law statutes, and commandments to follow them and rehearse them to the best of your abilities because like it was brought out yesterday bro at the end of the day the kingdom of heaven when it's finally here and established and, and being you know built up all right. After this place is destroyed, the law, statutes, and commandments are going to be put in our inward parts. So the law is never is never done away with, man. The righteousness that the heavenly Father gave as instruction on how to govern the earth is going to be the same righteous instruction that that is going to govern the earth in the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay. You think there's not a, a particular order being d done in the heavens right now? No, that everything is in order up there. And like it says in the Lord's prayers, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, man. Okay. But like I said, by, by default, man, hey, if you haven't turned back to the destruction of the heavenly father, your you, his words, how, how can you under, believe, actually truly believe that you have an understanding of what the scriptures is, is actually saying from beginning 
Genesis to the end, Revelation, man. All right. How does that work, man? Okay. I'll answer that for you. It doesn't, man. It it just, it doesn't, man. All right. And let's see. Um, there was another precept that came to mind. Kind of. Uh, I think it's Second Corinthians four. Yeah. This is um Second Corinthians chapter four verse three. It says, "But if our gospel, all right, the gospel, the one, uh, uh, uh you know, uh, singly interpreted." gospel of the scriptures the good news all right that's spoken about in isaiah the 61st chapter that our lord lord quoted all right the good news all right which actually we'll finish off with that unless anything else comes to me but it says but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost right it tells you in john the third chapter that this is the condemnation light has come into the world but that men love darkness rather than light here it is you know, in First John 2 and 15, it tells you that what? Uh, you know, to love not the world, neither the things in the world, for the love of the world is 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 basically the hatred of Yahweh Basim Yashai. You can't, you can't side with the world and with the Heavenly Father. No, you got to completely detach, man. Okay, you got to completely detach, man. All right? <clears throat> but it says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Okay? It says, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Mashiach, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. It says, for we preach not ourselves, but Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Yahweh Shai's sake. All right. And that being a point, our gospel is hid because what? Our people are still lost. All right. And the Lord, like we brought out, Matthew 15, 24, I mean, the scriptures came out bro you know at the end of the day if it's for him it's for him but it, you know for most of our people again why can't they get it man it's not for them at the end of the day as it is written in zechariah zechariah uh or is it zephariah i always get it mixed up zechariah the 13th chapter in the eighth and ninth verse two-thirds of our people will be cut off and die in this land man all right all over, but nevertheless, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I said I wanted Isaiah 61 because even within the gospels, right here, even within reading this, the good news, okay, like it says, the good tidings, even within this, it tells you that in the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be a hierarchy, man, there's going to be those that are in rulership. And those that are not in rulership being ruled over, all right? Even the Lord spoke about it in, in, in Revelation, you know, that, that he that endureth unto the end, you know, shall sit next to me on, on my throne and, we, you know, shall rule the, the nations with a rod of iron, roughly paraphrasing, all right? But this is Isaiah 61 and 1. It says, the spirit of the Lord power is upon me because the Lord Yahweh hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meat. He has sent, so like he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, all right? And this is ultimately going into uh, the nation of Israel, obviously, but it says the opening of the prison, meaning these mental chains, you know, that were once on us, whether it be Christianity, whether it be other philosophies and doctrines of the world, Nevertheless, busting out of those and now understanding that this is the way, that this is the light that you should walk there in it, man. It says uh, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all the morning. If what is the vengeance, man? You know, let's just go and let's get the word, bro. At the end of the day, that's part of the gospel, vengeance, man. All right. It says, man, it says vengeance by God, by Samson, by enemies of Judah. Woo, man. Yeah, and it tells you in Psalms, the 83rd chapter, who are the enemies of, uh, well, Judah being uh, the head tribe of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. All right. Our Lord sprang out of Judah. Okay. But nevertheless, just all of Israel, 
is mentioned in uh, uh, Psalms, the 83rd chapter. All of Israel, you have enemies, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay? But like it says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, all right? To give unto them beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. All right, it says, and they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers, all right? And that's just the point, man. That's the gospel, bro. The Lord came back on the scene. Yahweh Shai, who the world so ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, came back on the scene to redeem those that were lost, man. All right? To be that final atonement for the nation of Israel. All right? You know, people get thrown off. Like I said yesterday, our people get so caught up on words like all, okay, that all should come to repent. See, everybody, no. These epistles, these different, you know, letters that were written by, you know, uh, the apostles, et cetera, et cetera, are for the church, all right, are for for the, 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 the household of faith, all right, not for everybody, man, okay, Yahweh Shai turned away people, Yahweh Shai had to accept you, all right, and if you not walking according to the way that he walked, because he was perfect, from beginning to end, man, from birth and how he was, uh, you know, all that, how all that played out until his death, all right? He kept the law, statutes, and commandments perfect. He was perfect in the law, the only one to do that, all right? Now, we being those scattered Israelites, okay, those, those, uh, those Israelites that have been called Americans and Colombians and Venezuelans and uh, niggas and you know spicks and all that now you know what the deal is man you're actually an israelite that these things was all prophesied from before time and then now like it says in uh romans 13 and all right let's just grab it now it's really time to repent because it says what <clears throat> romans 13 and 11 and then knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed, all right? There's that word sleep again, man. Spiritual slumber, all right? Spiritual slumber, okay? It's the spirit that quickeneth, man. And our people are spiritually dehydrated, all right? That's okay, man. Whether you be a two third or one third, whether, you know, Israel will be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation, man. All right. At the end of the day, you know, can't rock with you on this side, see you on the other side. All right. And that's when it'll be all good, bro. That's when things will be set up and you and our people will finally realize, oh, they were right. I mean, even before then, they're going, oh, man, where's the prophets? You know, the scriptures talk about they're going to seek to and fro for the prophets. They won't be able to find us, man. All right. This this knowledge that we're, we're giving out now is looked over. Some hear it and might, you know, stick with them a little bit. But eventually the Lord is going to bring it to their mind. When shit is hitting the fan for real, for real, our people are going to remember Oh shit, the Lord is gonna bring it to their mind and it's gonna be heavy on their spirit, man. Like, oh shit. Those motherfuckers were trying to tell me, man. Wow, they were trying to tell me, like, yo, they're gonna be pulling up to the block. So <laughs> they're gonna be pulling up off Main Street and, you know. <laughs> uh, man, they're gonna, they're gonna be looking for the word in that day, bro. But the Lord is also gonna eventually put the spirit on us. I'm gonna forget where it says specifically, but that that our tongue will cleave to the roof of our mouth. You know, the Lord is gonna do what He does, man. All right, but it's the Spirit that quickeneth, man. All right, it's the Spirit that has to gather you, 
And the Lord is only giving his spirit unto those that make an earth to return back unto his word, man. All right, his instruction, okay? <clears throat> but this is, uh, I wanted to grab this. First Corinthians 2 and 9, it says, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Yahweh hath prepared for them that love him. But the Most High hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Yahweh. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of Yahweh knoweth no man, but the spirit of Yahweh, right? So that's the thing, bro. The spirit has to be dwelling in you, right? It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of which is of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the Most High. Yeah, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, faith. These these character uh, these qualities are given unto us, man. All right. It says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not. The things of the spirit of Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Yeah, our people are spiritually discerned, spiritually dehydrated. All right, they lack spiritual hydration, man. But it says, but he that is spiritual, right, us that have the rakah with us, judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Yeah, man. And see, that's the big thing of our people. They don't understand judgment. All right, wicked men understand not judgment. It says, for who hath known the mind of, of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of a Mashiach. See, when the Lord came on the scene, he knew what he was supposed to do, man. It tells you in Luke, the second chapter, he told his mom and dad, Joseph and Mary, hey, know ye not that I'm about my father's business? He's about his father's business, man, okay? And this is, that's the same mindset we need to be about. Uh, you know, some big, big shoes to fill, but that's our, that's our big bro, man. All right. That's our big brother, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, man. And we need to try to follow him to the best of our ability. A lot of our people are through. All right. Nevertheless, man, um, that's pretty much the point, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, our people just can't get it at the end of the day. So yeah, that's all the precepts. I mean, at the end of the day, it just was a flowing in the spirit. Um, something I kind of wanted. Give a few words on, like I said, Lord willing, that was edifying, right? And uh, of good service unto you and yours. All right, I want to end it off by giving all praise, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachak Vadash. Double honors again unto the apostles and the elders, great millstone. Peace, blessings, and many salutations unto the election. Shalom. All right.